All right, so given that dashboards in Cascade are really nice for setting the tone for different meetings or uh, telling a story about progress at a high level, let's talk about the different visuals you can pull into dashboards, which uh, we call widgets. So there's gonna be a mix of different charts and line graphs, uh, even just free text uh, widgets that you can put in here to tell that story. And first, let's just cover what are the most commonly used ones, and then I'll walk you through a few examples uh, using these two example dashboards I have queued up here. So first of all, when you add a new dashboard and you're wanting to add new widgets to it, you're presented with a decent list of options here. Now, it's easy to get overwhelmed and not know where to start if you're not sure, but the main things that you're going to be interested in using early on when you're starting to get a rhythm going are the chart widget. So that's going to be letting you uh, slice and dice different goals of different types into bar graphs, pie graphs, line graphs, and so on. Just give you an instant visual of, hey, you know, how do all of our different goals come together in terms of status and stuff like that. The table is another really good one because this is just going to give you a filtered list of goals or tasks that you can directly interact with off of Cascade in the dashboard. So you might, for example, bring in a list of objectives that show you at a high level what's the status of all these different overarching objectives per focus area. And then you can click into them to drill into the details of KPIs, measures, uh, actions, and so on from there. So between the chart and the table, even just those two, that's going to give you a lot to work with. Um, now, you might also have a notes widget because with a notes widget, you can just put in free text and sort of uh, give your subjective narrative around overall, what are the key things happening in the strategy today? Um, so I see that a lot with executive summary dashboards and uh, you can even put in direct hyperlinks within the notes widget to say a detailed snapshot report or, or whatever else might be relevant to the strategy. So between those three widgets, that'll give you a good start. Um, and there's also the single goal widget, which we'll see um, in detail in a moment as well. That's going to let you drill into a specific KPI and see all the different uh, um, milestones and um, progress, progress per period over a timeline. So let's close out of this and you can actually see it in action. We've got a board update dashboard here as an example. A nice array of widgets here to look at. So we've got a single goal widget listed right here. We can see uh, the $65 million revenue goal. And I can zoom in on the different line points to get an idea of, okay, how's the progress been progressing over the last several months? If I click on the line, I can open up the sidebar for that uh, KPI and, and drill into more detail. That's, that's an ongoing theme throughout dashboards is just being able to interact, bring up those goals, drill into it as needed. So um, keep that in mind as we look at the rest of these. Here's one on the right, the uh, uh, chart widget. In this case, we're looking at a uh, pie graph that's slicing and dicing the 2021 plan by status. So this is a cool thing because I can click into any given segment that'll bring up a list of whatever those goals are, and then I can click them from this pop-up as well, which would open it up at a new tab. So how does that get set up? Well, this is a pretty good example of what you can expect from your typical widget in Cascade, regardless of type. So if I go into the settings for this widget, it basically opens up this workflow where first I'm deciding what kind of chart is this? What's the scope of the information I want to look at? So I'm looking at a pie graph. I can choose either all goals as a starting point, or I can search for specific goals, and then I can further filter down as needed. So given that maybe I start with all goals as a starting point, I'll filter further and say, okay, I only want to work with uh, goals that are in the corporate strategic plan using the plan filter. So you get the idea. There's a lot of different filters you can layer on top of each other. Maybe you get more and more specific. You say, okay, given that we're looking at the corporate strategic plan, show me only uh, goals that are owned by this part of the organization, like marketing or operations and so on. So that's how the filters work. And now we're getting more into the, the visual aspects, right? Given that we chose the scope, we chose the format. Now, what are the little details in terms of how this can be visualized um, in the graph? So we have our data set. How do we want to group it? In this case, we're grouping by status. So we can clearly see all the different colored statuses there. Uh, but there's a lot of other options, right? We'll see other examples where maybe it's more interesting to group by owner if we have a different uh, array of people listed in a bar chart. You'll see that soon. 
And then which value are we looking at? You're pretty much always just going to use this count of goals, right? It's just, okay, what's the ratio of goals that fit in that category versus the others? So that's pretty basic. And then these are just two minor settings at the end. Do I want to see the legend or the labels so that we can see, okay, yeah, given that that's the ratio, uh, what's the number, right? 41%, or I should say 32% because there are 41 goals there. <clears throat> All right. So... Like I said, this is kind of the general workflow for almost all the widgets, which is what's the data set you're working with? Uh, how do you want that arranged? And is there anything else you want to adjust with uh, the visual now that it's pulled together? All right, let's look at a couple other ones. Here's another chart widget, but instead of looking at it as a pie graph, this one is leveraging the line graph functionality. So it's pretty cool. We, got a, we have a few different product lines that we're tracking maybe with an integration, pushing the data into this graph and we can see how each product line is performing against each other. And again, I can click into these to open up the goal if I want, but let's just glance at what that configuration looks like. So I go into the settings. You can see I've picked the line graph rather than the pie. And I can see, okay, it's a single Y axis. And now for the data source, same thing as before, right? This is gonna feel uh, repetitive where I can choose one or more goals to include on the graph. So I just picked all three of those product line KPI goals, and then they just get plotted on there. Now, there's no reason to apply any filters here, right? Because obviously I, I picked exactly the specific goals I wanted, so there's nothing really else to apply. And now because this is a line graph, obviously it's a little different uh, in how we configure it compared to a pie, uh, but conceptually it's the same. Given that we have this scope, how do I want it arranged? How do I want it to look? So the x-axis broken down by time, that makes sense. That's the default. Um, and then the y-axis is going to be that progress value. Most of the time, there's not much reason to adjust these, but have a play with it depending on if you'd like to experiment with the different time ranges, the periods to show. Usually, Cascade will just do what you need it to do when you pick your goals in here. And then here's the display settings. I like to show the data labels and the data points just so it's really clear. You know, it's one thing to see the trend, but, you know, I like detail. I like seeing the numbers there. So um, turn those on, and now you've got a pretty nice graph showing all those product lines. And for what it's worth, you know, you might break down revenue by person too, right? You have a quarterly revenue goal. It's broken down by individual people. You could see all the individual people's revenue on one graph here, which is pretty fun. Here's an example of one of those notes widgets I talked about really straightforward, you know, just free text, type some stuff in. Here's a link to a more detailed snapshot report. So that's pretty cool too. All right, and then here's the table widget. I, now this is probably my favorite one because this is the simplest, most straightforward uh, summary, which you can just filter for a list of goals. Maybe it's for your own goals, uh, for your team's goals, whatever it is. And then you can choose which columns you wanna bring in here to show information about those goals. So timeline is really common. We all really like that Gantt view. Start date, due date, maybe ownership, co-ownership. Um, but you'll know you'll always want the status or, or current completion so you can really get that colored um, status showing how are things going, right? That's what we want with dashboards right away is as soon as I glance at the dashboard, I want some idea of how things are going. So um, this widget does a nice way or does that in a nice way, but a little bit more detail than just one of those high level visuals. And just so for the sake of consistency, let's look at the settings. Same basic idea, right? Um, what is the uh, data that we're pulling from? So selecting data, filtering for data. Uh, how do we want that data displayed now that we've gotten it together? In this case, really basic, just choosing which columns. And then at the end, how do we want all the information grouped? So grouping by focus area in this case. All right. So I think that's a pretty good summary. The risk widget down here, this is just bringing in risks from across the uh, uh, system. So um, that one's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to configure with this one, just showing okay, all risks in the organization. And we can group by um, uh, which issues they're attached to, focus area, things like that. Now let's look at a little bit more granular dashboard. This is our project resourcing summary. So. Um, now, given that Cascade isn't fundamentally a project management platform, there are certain things about it that let it do things like this at a high level. So 
Um, I haven't talked about custom fields and stuff like that in this video because that's a whole topic in itself. But depending on how you like to report on or organize data around your different goals or, or projects, um, you can bring in those different custom fields on the reporting side for dashboards too. So first of all, we've got this high level project overview of, okay, what are the total number of projects per department and uh, stack those by statuses, right? So we can see marketing and sales has the most on its plate in terms of projects. Um, it also has completed the most projects. So eight projects completed, that's great. And just like everywhere else, I can click into those lists and see what that entails. As far as the settings go, uh, this is probably the last time I'll dive into the settings because this is hopefully feeling redundant for you. Um, but it's the same idea. I've chosen the bar chart. What's the data source? And then how do I want to filter further? Well, I just want to focus on the project template. So get all the high level goals out of there. Ignore the KPIs. Just show me the projects. And then I'm arranging it by department. So organization means pieces of the organization in Cascade. And then count of goals. Now, in this case, I'm stacking everything, right? So I don't have to. I could just show a single breakdown of uh, just a single bar, how many total projects are there. But I think it's a little more interesting to stack it because you still have that total sum, but then you're breaking it down further by status to get an idea of how effective is each department at the moment. And then, of course, showing the legend and the data labels. Like I said, I like that detail. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. So now if we go a little bit further, you'll see another one of those table widgets, which works the exact same way as the one we showed before, but it's just bringing in a lot of custom fields that are coming from that project template. So you can clearly see what is the current progress, sure, but are we under budget, over budget? How much have we spent? What's the balance? Uh, estimated hours of effort. So this is getting very granular, and depending on who you are, it might be uh, more information than you need, but the point is, these dashboards start off as a high level option to tell a story, but there is the option to bring in more granular information as needed in things like these tables. Finally, as we get a little bit further down, we see a mix of a uh, heat map, which this is pretty simple in Cascade right now, but you can uh, compare totals, total number of goals that fit different combinations of custom fields. So uh, if I open this up in the sidebar, this is gonna show us probably the most unique setup for um, configuration, but you basically choose a type of template you wanna center on, and you choose which axes will have what custom fields involved. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this one because if you're not using custom fields yet, uh, first of all, don't feel like you have to right now, just focus on right that communication around strategy, getting organized, uh, but this is dependent on having those custom fields before you can get meaningful data. More to the point, at the very bottom here, and this is the last one I wanted to cover, it's the table widget again, but it's zeroing in on task lists rather than goals. So when we're working in the table widget, one of the first things we can do in that is show in the scope, what kind of data are we looking at? So I, I skipped over this before, but basically you're confronted with this data source option. So up to this point, we've seen goals and that's what we focused on. Uh, for the whole time, but you can also in the table widget choose to look at tasks and then group the tasks by things like focus area or uh, goal in this case. Um, personally, I really like to group by goal because you can clearly see when you mark off a task, okay, which goal is this influencing? And in this case, I made one table widget with tasks that are outstanding and another where uh, tasks are completed. So the tasks are going to jump back and forth between these tables, which is pretty cool. So between that top level dashboard that shows a mix of high level visuals, KPI summaries, really nice view for executive leadership or uh, any team really just trying to start with the numbers. And then this dashboard, which, le which lets you dive further into uh, more detail around slicing and dicing projects, diving into things like budget and tasks. Um, those are pretty powerful visuals and they're very accessible too. So definitely jump in, get a feel for it. Uh, remember, if you end up having any questions about uh, how to leverage tasks or uh, dashboards, anything like that, you can find us underneath your initials here and using the live support option you'll find in that menu. All right. Well, good luck building. Thanks a lot.